Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video we're taking a first look at the brand new SDR Play RSPDX SDR receiver. Now this is primarily a replacement for the RSP2 and RSP2 Pro but it's bundled with a whole host of exciting new features especially if you're interested in receiving those weak stations below 2 MHz. Now if you're familiar with SDR Play products then you'll instantly notice the new packaging as we take the RSPDX out of its box. Now the RSPDX has been extensively redesigned to provide enhanced performance with additional and improved pre-selection filters, improved intermodulation performance and the addition of a user selectable dab notch filter. The software selectable attenuation steps have also been increased to provide more of a fine tune. When the RSPDX is used in conjunction with SDR Play's own software, SDR Uno, it introduces a special HDR mode which stands for High Dynamic Range and this is for reception within selected bands below 2 MHz. HDR delivers improved intermodulation performance and fewer spurious responses for those challenging bands. The RSPDX is a single tuner, wideband, full featured 14 bit SDR which covers the RF spectrum from 1 kHz all the way up to 2 GHz, and that also provides 10 MHz of spectrum visibility. Now it contains three antenna ports, two of which are SMA connectors and operate across the full 1 kHz to 2 GB range. The third connection is a BNC connector, and this operates between 1 kHz and up to 200 MHz. Whereas before on the RSP2, the high Z port was only supported up to 30 MHz. The RSP2 was only 12 bit, and as mentioned before, the RSPDX is 14 bit. Now, another great feature is that the RSPDX is shipped in a fully sturdy and robust steel case, unlike previous models where it was plastic. It also has the support for 24 MHz plug and play reference clock input which allows the unit to be synchronized to an external reference clock, such as a GPS disciplined oscillator. Let's just take a little look at the software and see what other features have been added. So to access the HDR band, simply click on the band button and select HDR. As you click on each of the bands, you will notice that the indicator will turn green and that HDR mode is active. You'll also notice that the LO will be locked for that band. You can click the band again to disable HDR mode. Now the first of the two additional filters will automatically be engaged once you go below 2 MHz. And then the second HDR filter will be engaged when you go below 500 kHz. Obviously you will need to have a fairly decent HF antenna when you start getting involved with the receiving transmissions below 2 megs. but with that being said I know plenty of users receiving low band transmissions with just a simple 3 meter loop designed for HF and below. Another recent cool implementation into SDR Uno software to make things easier for the user is the addition of a Save WS button, which is located in the main tab window. Now what this does, it saves a new workspace. Now before you'd have to press a specific keystroke, which wasn't particularly hard, but it was actually pretty hard to remember. So I believe Mike from SDR Play suggested to have this feature in added into the software, and it makes it really easy to save a new workspace. Now what what a workspace is, as you can see here, SDR Uno is made up of all these different panels. As you can see, I'm just rearranging the panels at the moment to a, a different layout. And once you've found a layout that you quite like, you can easily just go ahead and press the Save WS button, and then you can choose where you want it to save by just clicking, and it will save immediately there. Now to switch between the different workspaces, you just click where it says Default Workspace. There you go, I've gone back to the original. Let's go back to the new one. And there we go. So it makes it really easy to create new layouts depending on what you're doing. Now another feature that I mentioned previously before is that the RF gain stroke attenuator slider has now had extra steps added. This means that when you're adjusting the RF gain or attenuator, you've got more control over it because you get a more of a finer tune. Something else which is an addition to this version of SCR Uno is you have the information bar down the bottom of the screen. You'll see the grey bar at the bottom of the waterfall and it will tell you the last selected button that you've pressed. 
Well, there we go, guys. That's an overview of the brand new SDR Play RSP DX. I believe these are going to be out towards the middle of November. So if you are interested in purchasing one of these, then please go and have a look on the SDR Play website to find your nearest dealer. And if you're in the UK, you can go and check out moonraker.eu, who I believe will be stocking these as soon as they are available. And as always, I want to say a massive thank you to my current patrons. If you want to get involved with that, patreon.com forward slash techminds. You can also follow me on Twitter. Handle will be down in the description below. And I also want to say a massive thank you to SDR Play and all the team there that have helped support me and the channel and also provide me with these excellent SDR products. Until the next video, guys, I hope you have a great rest of the day. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.